again on FB Live with another show. Uh, got you know very great personality coming up. I was very lucky last week to have uh, one of the super coaches that you know helps Sri Lanka cricket and had a great chat. And once again, I'm very fortunate to have this you know great human, uh, great person, absolutely brilliant coach uh, to have on the show. That uh, it, it was again, it was you know very nerve wracking you know getting these just gentlemen on online uh, because of the technical issues that we have anyhow we overcame all those adversities obstacles uh, he is with me here tonight and uh, before i bring him on the show and to have a chat with this great man who has contributed so much to sri lanka cricket i just want to make sure that everything is working and just a minute Yes, everything seems fine. So, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, I would like to bring this, you know, special gentleman who made a massive impact in my life. And, you know, it's always a pleasure and, and a privilege to have Mr. Graham Ford. Good evening to you, sir. Good to have you on the show. How are you doing? Jared, fantastic to be on the show. Um, always lovely to have contact with my sort of Sri Lankan family as you would like to call it or i'd like to call it um and thank you for your sort of kind words there and um welcome and uh, just to say hi to to those sri lankan cricketing fans that are listening and um i had fantastic times and i miss those days and um yeah uh, that's pretty much it from me Coach, how you how 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 did you manage? You know, during these unprecedented times, you know, I think you know, I, I believe that you know, you've been keeping in touch with the uh, with uh, you know all your you know former cricketers and you know the well wishers of Sri Lanka cricket. You are in touch. You are never, although you are away, that you are never away from our hearts and what you have done to us. And uh, how did you manage to? We are still in in. We are not in a lockdown situation. We we had sixty days of curfew. I think today is the 61st day uh, that there is curfew in Sri Lanka. So it's harder than being in a lockdown situation. How did you manage yourself in, in Ireland? And I know for, you know, like since you are a man from Durban, you don't like the cold too much. You know, you got, you know, you know, hot blood in you, you know, just how did you manage? No, you know that. Uh, and, and that is the biggest challenge for me. Um, so we've kind of got out of winter now and it's a little bit better, but it's still quite cold um it, at least I've, I've got my family with me which has made this whole oh, great news all right lockdown so much easier um I, I sort of so my daily routine wake up and try and catch up on the on the news i'm not a i'm not a big as you know i'm not a big social media bloke because i just think it takes up so much of your time and you become addicted to it and all of that so i kind of catch the, the news and maybe do a little bit of um, checking on Donald Trump on, on YouTube and that kind of thing. <laughs> and, yes. and then I try and get out and do a bit of exercise um, just to try and keep the, keep the body going. We allowed to exercise uh, as long as it's within what well, was up, in, up until Monday. It was two kilometers kilometers from your home and now it becomes five kilometers so you, you can get out and do a bit of exercise um and then you come back and you spend a bit of family time and uh, yeah it's um I've, I've listened the good thing is i've been able to listen to a lot of podcasts and things from great sporting coaches and almost it slowed me down a bit in that i can when you when you're coaching a national team you're so caught up in your team and results and what's next and the next training session was sure. actually me a chance to do a bit of um research on baseball and listening to podcasts of of, of sports psychologists and and top people so um yeah that's kind of the way i've got through it um yeah it, 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 it and at the same time, we've we've had player reviews, so online player reviews. Um, try to keep in touch with the players as much as possible. Well, 
you don't want to overdo that, but you want to just let them know you're around. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how I've been going about. Great it. stuff, coach. I was going to ask you, you know, sometime you know during the show whether you still do your running. You know, there's a story behind it. You know that you know I would tell the 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 viewers there are so many already people you know online you know asking questions you know want to interact with you i was going to ask you about your running you know that uh, you've been a long distance runner how you used to run you know during even after three hours of you know throwing balls at the net you still you know used to tell me manage pick me up you know on the way or and i'll see you back in the hotel and you know just do your seven kilometer runs you are unbelievable and uh, I don't think you know people out there you know what a humble man you are and you know, how I first met you at Sri Lanka cricket you know as I you know I think that was my second or the third stint that you know I took over as manager and you have just come to Sri Lanka then I was told like, I was walking out of uh, Ashley's room and I had a meeting with CEO and he said uh, um, I will set up a meeting with um, with the new coach I said not necessary I will introduce myself it so happened, you know, when I came down, you know, I bumped into you, you know, at the Sri Lanka Cricket Corridor. I said, Coach, and you didn't know who the hell I was. And I said, I'm your manager. And, you know, just you gave me a big hug. He said, welcome on board, mate. You know, so I knew what kind of a man you are. My first impressions on you, you were great. And uh, I didn't know much about you. And I, I always believe that the first impressions go a long way into today. The respect that I have for you, you know, your gesture, I'll never forget. Uh, boss, you know, many questions. And before we start off, you know, going into other deeper stuff, uh, people have asked, you know, just please, Mr. Ford, please tell us something, your experience working under Mr. Bob Bulmer. What was it like, you know, when you first started? Not many people know where you came from, you know, Mr. Bob Bulmer is no longer with us. If you can just tell that, you know, your experience working with that great man, so it will be brilliant. Yeah, I mean, gee, I, I, I was hell of a lucky and i think all your all your listeners will know that i wasn't a, an international player or anything like that so um my <coughs> excuse me my involvement in in um in coaching um there were quite a few people instrumental in in getting me involved and um so i I started at, at what is now known as the Dolphins, but it used to be KwaZulu Natal or Natal. Um, I, got, I was very lucky to. So I, I, the, the team had had a, a bit of a nightmare um, in the previous couple of years, and for some reason, the, the board decided to go a different route and get a young. I was very young and energetic, um, and they decided to to get me involved as the team coach. Uh, I, I was then very lucky to to sign um, Malcolm Marshall as an overseas pro and um, Clive Rice, who had been rejected by Eddie Barlow at Transvaal. So two of the great, well, I wouldn't say the greatest, but two brilliant cricket brains knew so much about the game uh, great leaders and suddenly i had them i was the, this is my start of my coaching career but boy were they amazing and did they help me out and did they they, they gave me so much of, uh, knowledge and advice um and the team did exceptionally well over those couple of years which then made ali Bacha identify me as the possible next coach which then the next national coach um which then allowed me to i was tagged on to go with bob at, uh, so by i think it was the west indian series in south africa where i started with bob then i went to um, new zealand with bob and then the world cup what did i learn from them um he, he, I mean, he was that hell of a forward thinker. Um, came up with some, you know, he was known for his innovation. Um, he, it, I'm sure the fans will remember that he was the guy that tried to introduce the earpiece communication to the batsman out in the middle or the captain out in the middle, um, which got banned by the RCC. But it was that kind of thinking that he had. So it was always great to be around that. 
um, and, and and just a, a very organized uh, uh, probably probably took coaching to a, a, at those in those days what was the coach he was the nice guy that knocked around didn't do much he was a good ex-player and he just knocked around the, the dressing room and, and said a few good things all of a sudden bob brought it into being proper coaching um, and and really analyzing uh, he brought in with the uh, Sports Science Institute to, to make sure that we had a, a, an analyzing system. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, it, it, the organization taught me a lot, just to organize your practices, organize your training, organize your selection even. Um, he, he added all of that to, to, to what the job was all about. So great opportunity for me to have worked alongside and very fortunate and blessed. And I've been a hell of a lucky in, in, in my whole career that I've often been able to work with people. And I, and I mentioned Marshall and Rice, who started in New York. Um, back then there was, there was Bob as well, and there have been a few others along the way that have just added and helped me understand what this job's all about. Great stuff, Coach. You know, if you can, please, you know, if you can, you know, speak a little louder or get close to the microphone. Sometimes, you know, that you know, we hear a bit of audio, and I think people would love to hear everything that you say. Is the other question, you know, uh, Marcel is Alice Junior. I was asking, sir, where is your Irish whiskey? You know, we would like to see the whiskey, you know, coming, you know, just flowing, you know, just uh, <laughs> keep the keep the liquids going throughout the show. That you know, that you won't feel the time moving. I'm sure that you know. Yeah, if, uh, uh, Charis, it's only uh, uh, ten past four. Yeah, so it's a <laughs> <little> bit, <laughs> I have a few in the evening, but um, it's probably a little bit early. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and when it comes to Irish whiskey, the old Jamisons is always a popular choice. And yeah. and but I've, I've now got to that age where I find my sons are probably drinking a bit more than I am. <laughs> Yeah, we all go through that stage, you know, and, you know, the daughters drink more than the fathers, you know, that's that's what is happening, you know, like, you know, in today's world. Uh, all right, coach, you know, from there, you know, you, you I think from uh, South Africa, I think you had a stint with Kent. And uh, then that people took notice of you as director Kent and, you know, very briefly or, you know, that, you know, you could take your time. Before you came to Sri Lanka, the, lots of people have forgotten or, you know, just... Uh, that don't remember that you were offered to coach India and uh, you, you know, not many people know that you decided not to take up the offer. Instead, you know, you, you decided to, you know, take up the offer, for, you know, with Sri Lanka. Could you please tell the people who are watching, you know, what made you, you know, what, you know, what was the thinking behind why not India? Everybody wanted to be a part of the Indian cricket, but you're one man who said no. And decided to you know to to come to Sri Lanka. You know, could you please tell us you know what made you make that decision? Yeah, I think I think that's slightly um, out of context. The whole thing. Um, uh, so I was coaching at Kent. I was um, the, 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 there was real interest from India. Um, Raul Dravid seemed to be very keen to have me involved. Um, I went to India and, and yes, I was offered the position. Um, at the same time, Sri Lanka did, did approach me, but that was, I think, I, I can't remember the exact year, but it was like 2012. No, it was 2007 or while I was, I wasn't with Kent in, in 2012. Right. Okay. Well, so th th that was well before uh, I, I joined up with Sri Lanka. Um, Sri Lanka did approach me at the time. Uh, it wasn't right for me and my family and uh, certain problems that I had uh, at, at home, at the family. I, I just couldn't take on that sort of capacity of a job. Um, sometimes I look back and wonder, gee, maybe I should have, maybe I shouldn't have, but I, I just couldn't do it uh, at, at a particular time. And then, so it was only some years later 
that was flat with the well, second lot of his radio came about. Um, but it, no, at that time, I, it wasn't just like a, no, I'm not going to do India, I'm going to do Sri Lanka. I was very keen on the Indian job, but the family situation just wasn't, wasn't right. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the explanation. And then a, a, couple, of, a couple of years later, um, the, the offer came in 2012, as you say, and I jumped at the you know, I was, I was really good, absolutely good, and just jumped straight away. All right. You know, that's, yeah. that's a, uh, interesting that, you know, what you're saying, uh, Coach, you know, that's a, uh, so that's, people did not know what actually transpired, you know, why not in not India and you came to Sri Lanka, you know, that you have clearly explained all the people who were, who were asking me questions and watching that, you know, it's due to the family commitments, you made that change. And it, perhaps it was India's loss, and you know that our gain to uh, to have you in the country. I think you know you first came to Sri Lanka in 2012, and as I as I said when I first met you, and you met the boys. And have you met any of the players? You know before coming to to Sri Lanka, you know did you have any interaction with them? Yeah, just just before answering that, I'll, I'll go back to the whole Indian thing, and um, yeah, just want to say. You know, it was a job that I was, I, 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 I mean, it's the biggest job in cricket. And I would have yeah. loved to have done it, but it just wasn't the right time. And and um, so, you know, you walk, well, now you look back and think, well, was that a, should I have just pushed on? But I think I had no regrets. Um, I realized I've been lucky with cricket and, uh, and I've moved on. But, um, what a what a great adventure that would have been, but it, it just wasn't right at the time. And um, so yeah, disappointing that I couldn't do it. But uh, great, great. Okay, and then your next question was just remind me what you. Um, no, I was you know just like you know just asking you the whether whether did you did you know any any players you know prior to coming to Sri Lanka? Did you have any interaction? You know, I think you had a close relationship right. with Sangha yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, no, not. Well, I had coached South Africa against Sri Lanka on a good couple of times. Um, right. But in those days, uh, the relationship between uh, opposing teams, it wasn't quite what it's like today. Today, they're a bit more friendly and um, probably because of the IPL and whatever, and they play together or these other T20 tournaments, they get to know each other. And they, in those days, you almost... You didn't talk to to the opposition. You just <laughs> whatever. You didn't say anything, or if you got in the lift, you if you, if you said anything, it was kind of abusive. You know, like it just pull the pull the. Yeah, I was going to say something else, but you, you, you'd make a joke about them. Um, so um, from I, I knew them from international cricket. Uh, having coached teams against them. And then in county cricket, was pretty different. You know, there was almost that respect. So, uh, Sarah, I knew he had played for Somerset and I got to know him pretty well. Whenever we played Somerset, we had some good chats. So, I got to know Sarah quite well. Um, Sarah had also been to to Dolphins, Dolphins, whatever you want to call it, and play in the and I am as a consultant in that sort of time. So we knew Senna pretty well. Um, then, um, Sri Lanka, just before I got appointed the first time, Sri Lanka saw it. South Africa and came to train in Durban, where I'm based. And then um, it was pouring down with rain, and they came in and, and into the indoor um, setup that I was coaching. Some, in fact, I think I was coaching Dave Miller at the time. And they sort of came in, and, and quite a lot of them were. You're fairly fortunate. 
just a little bit, you know. That yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is a lot of them were pretty chatty and pretty friendly, which was great. Um, so that was kind of all I knew was those few experiences. Then, all right. of, then all of a sudden, got the the call up to to come and coach. And um, our first, if you remember, our first start was Australia. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, after you'd come and introduce yourself, we went to Australia. And, um, yeah, we had a disastrous start. We lost to Victoria's second team. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then the team showed character. And that's when I knew I was in the right place. Yeah, that was the the, uh, the we played I think three tests and uh, we did pretty well in the in the ODI series. You know, we came into the final. It was a tri series. No, that was just a tri series at that stage, um, and we got to the finals. We beat Australia. We beat India a good few times. Um, unfortunately, I think we slipped up in the finals. But in the finals, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we played at the so we lost our first two games hopelessly. So we'd lost to Victoria Seconds, we'd lost to India, we lost to Australia. I remember finding my wife and saying, geez, I don't know what I've, what I've let myself into here. But from there on, the boys showed incredible character. And, and I got to know the guys better and better. And we, if you remember, we had a great win against Australia in, in Hobart. And there were some of the guys that, you know, I can speak probably a bit about it, but there were a couple of the guys who, who wouldn't talk to me because I, I thought they didn't understand English. But after, <laughs> <laughs> after that win, they were suddenly, um, so, and you actually said, I'll see you in the pub, and you never pitched up in the pub, if I remember rightly. But a couple of these lads pitched up, and all of a sudden, the English was hell of a good, and we had a great evening, and, and we, rightly so, because it was a fantastic win. Oh, really? And it's a great story, and I, did, I can't, you know, sorry you know, if, I, if I let you down at that point, you know, there's one guy who had sent me a message, you know, one of the guys, you know, who made a uh, uh, major contribution to the team and who was very close to you, he, he sent me a, a message this afternoon, he just wanted to say, uh, hi to you, coach. And if you can hear, this is uh, you, you know, can, can you make him out? You know, just uh, it's a quick message from the guy from the lad. You know, if you if you know the guy, you know, he's this say, is uh, after uh, his lockdown. A quick hi to a quick uh, hi 40. to uh, 40. We've been known each, We've other, been known since, each other since uh, 2012 when he started coaching uh, the national, uh, the national uh, team. Uh, and uh, team ever since, and, uh, ever since having then, a, we've been having great a relationship great relationship, and, uh, and uh, still we are in still touch. We are in touch and I wish him all the very I wish him all the very best. Wonderful, he's a wonderful human being, human being. Um, you know, uh, you know, and, I uh, so and I was so lucky to meet him, and um, uh, still, um, have uh, still have a good with relationship him, so with him. So I wish him all the very best. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the surprises, you know. Do you do you remember this bloke? Yeah, incredible. But he's looking a bit different, and I, I, I'm not sure whether he's wearing a dress or what he's wearing there. But. Um, <laughs> he is, no, he's he's, he's, up, uh, he's wearing a singlet. Uh, I can't. He's wearing a... Okay, I, I understand, but I can't say enough about the bloke. He's he's been fantastic, and I know people have criticised him, and but I know him so, and you know him as well. And this is a great bloke and um, a great leader, and was identified by Mahela and and Sanga as being a guy that can really take the team forwards. Yeah. Uh, as, as things went along, there was there were a few disruptions as far as that was concerned. But and, and he had his little injury issues as well. But I can't say enough about him. Um, and when I go back to Sri Lanka, and I've been back with Ireland as well, and uh, I just yeah. Um, so it's nice to see him. Nice to see him say all that. Um, and yeah, we had a. We had a, just like I had with you, we had a, a tight partnership, which was so important to the team. 
and I still remember him when we in that um, uh, Champions Trophy game at the Oval when we beat England. And between us, we decided, and that was between you, me, and him, we decided to send Kule in as a bit of an impact player in the middle of the innings. And Kule, Kule Saker, for those that don't know who I'm talking about, smacked the ball everywhere. I think he got 70 of nothing, 70 of 40 or something. And then we finished the game off, which was a great victory. And, um, you know, people forget that Angelo was a, a big part in that, that decision, um, even though he was the next guy to go in and bat. So I, I really enjoyed working with him. And, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I just, uh, it's great to see that he's, he's bowling again. And when I look back at some of the games, right when I first started, the impact that he had with the ball, was impressive and, and, and it's going to be crucial going forwards if he can stay fit exactly it's a bit unfortunate coach you know he just started you know blossoming again as an all-rounder he just you know before the whole covid thing came and the the, the international cricket came to a standstill and you were just you know performing his role in the back as an all-rounder we i personally i know that you wish him uh as you know, you wish him nothing but the very best at the moment. You know that he's trying to keep himself fit, trying to get back to the team as a as a as a leading all rounder. And there is another guy. You know, you know, just you know, I want to. You know, I said I'm not going to give you surprises, but uh, he's another guy who have done a lot of work with him. You know that you had placed a lot of faith on this boy, who's who's been patiently waiting online. Want to say hi to you? I'm going to bring him into the stream right now. He's been listening to you, coach and uh see whether you could remember this book and i just say a quick hi to him do you remember this book yeah, yeah. <laughs> coach how are you yeah one of the toughest the one of the <laughs> toughest books i've ever worked with um so <laughs> great great to see you buddy um i you know i always admired you as you know um but the biggest moment was that that day at ssc when you went out there with a bloody smashed up hand and and made a match winning 100. So yeah, I loved that. I loved all of that. Um, so great to see you. Um, Steve might not want to see you. Great to see you as well, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Great to see you as well. How are you doing? I hope all good with you. Well, I, I mean, this has been a difficult period for everybody, but um, it's going okay. Um, I so I, I actually had a bit of a setback a while a while ago with an injury, a couple of injuries, and so I don't want to bore anybody with that. But so I'm slowly trying to build myself back up to fitness because um, I you remember I always liked my fitness, but I'm I'm way way off the that pace. But it's given me a chance to try and sort of slowly build that up, um, and I'm with my family, so yeah. I'm pretty happy. And, and and how about you? Yeah, good, good, all good, coach. I was uh, I'm just, you know I, I was in Australia and got back recently, so yeah, always I good. To do the yeah, I saw, you, I saw you'd gone really well, and you coached player coach, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. so it was yeah. good, good experience. Uh, I really enjoyed that uh, stint and wanted to, you know, get some, you know, different yeah. challenge. And I've always loved challenges, so you know me. So wanted to, you know, get something different. So I think I, I had a really good uh, stint over there, and you know, hopefully, you know, things. So, will work so what, out. I, what I want to ask you is, your wife still cutting your hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, when Charit spoke to me, uh, she, <laughs> he actually, you know, we mentioned about it, and I said once to him, um, him uh, at call test or something like that. She cut my yeah, hand. Was, yeah. It wasn't looking great. <laughs> that was so funny. That was hilarious. You know, in fact, coach. You know, we had a we had a trial run last evening. Uh, just before that, I wanted to do a, a test with Cow to see that everything okay. So I had I had like you know Cow appeared you know on screen like you know a guy from 
from all 80s old train you remember that you know all those guys with big afros that you know dancing along you know, with all the disco yeah. music how yeah. i look just like that so i said hey is bagya going to cut your hair he said oh i'm thinking i better not <laughs> I was not we were not allowed to go out court so you know uh, so we have to stay at home for nearly now two months now so we had to you know do our own you know haircuts and you know do our stuff so i i prefer not to have a haircut and grow a bit more so that obviously i can you know feel a bit taller with the with my hair <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah. Yeah, well, i mean let me ask you i mean with that innings at the SSC against australia with the bad hand and all of that would that be your greatest um innings that you've played yeah at the moment yes yeah definitely for sure uh, i think um i was uh, uh, today i'm not sure whether you know how i played that innings it was um I wanted to you went straight straight from the nets. Yeah, I couldn't hold the bat coach because I yeah. I can remember I, I think can, I, I kind I of pressure. Yeah, you know, I sort of said you know, kind of show some toughness and you hit a few balls in the nets and the next thing the ruin got out, I think. And it was exactly. like get in there. Go and do it. <laughs> so yeah, I probably yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean I don't know. I sold you down the river a little bit but um Gee, what an innings. No, I thought that was that was really I mean that uh, encouraged me to prove a point that yeah. I'm uh, you know I'm strong and uh, obviously I can do better obviously your, the, the, your, your whole career let's be honest it, it, it's been a fighter. That's what you're about. You're you're a fighter. So I I that's why I didn't um I wasn't worried about sending you out there as I knew you were going to take on the flight and maybe sometimes when when you've got an injury it um takes a little bit away from the fear of failure or whatever it might be and you grabbed the opportunity like you can't believe so it's fantastic great day that wasn't it fantastic yeah it was fantastic i mean the, it was uh, i believe uh, the 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 feeling that i got before i went on to bat that about two or three overs you and angie came in to me and said mate you know you got three overs to survive today and you just have to go and i felt you know this is what i can do best for the team at this stage and i felt you know i should do this for the team because i knew that if another two wickets have fallen then we we will be in trouble so i just had to take my responsibility at that time i knew that i couldn't hold my bat uh i just you know i just i don't know some energy pumped into me and i said to myself uh, look you know i should you know i whatever i have you know done you know the hard work that i put it in uh, right throughout you know the number of years you know it will help me out so i started to trust myself uh, obviously as you said that the previous couple of innings were i wasn't you know scoring any runs i i, I wasn't even scored 10 runs for the last 5 innings yeah. so i was yeah. i was really you know really wanted to go and prove myself that i'm you know because at the i don't know whether you remember you know the series against england before prior to that i was i was the man of the series in that uh, yeah. against the england from the yeah. sri lankan team so like yeah. coming into the series i had a lot of confidence but like the first two test matches uh, obviously i didn't score runs and there's a lot of media hype came into uh, players and obviously you know so i wanted to prove myself and like you know with the webbing finger obviously i wasn't sure that i could do that but you know for some reason that that push that you gave me and i obviously you know i haven't told this to you at, at up until now but i must tell you this i felt really angry at that time uh, you know saying you know when you when you came and said to me obviously you know that i had like six teachers and obviously i couldn't hold the bat but when you came and said to uh, said to me you go and do this i i you know it got me really you know uh, worried because i knew that i was not 100% but at the other end i felt look you know 
he told me to do this i should do this and i should i did it to prove uh, that you know that i could i could do that for you know for the team so like you know the next day you know i started all over i had the you know mindset in my uh, head to you know um prove something to the team that i am a valuable player uh, for the team so i mean that was really 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 you know um, probably I, i didn't play from my talent probably from the heart i would have played that 100 so that is why that is why it is more memorable for me great story cow you know that you know as you said that you backed yourself you know you backed your skill and the coach backed you there's a story behind it you know leading up you know you you spoke about it uh for if you can remember coach that uh coach was under tremendous pressure and i was part of you know you know not a select as such but i was you know in all those management meetings and coach was under tremendous pressure you know because you are you were not amongst runs you know leading up to the third test and you did not get too many runs in the first innings and then you you had a injury and you had to bat under pressure and coach was under you know i still remember under under severe stress and i remember when you got that 100 he was the first look who came and said few mate cow approved it you know that uh, that you put coach at uh, at ease and you know you you saved the side you know you ensured that you know we had a we had a white wash and we we went on to beat Aussies we beat them 3-0 and it was a great inning cover and I, i i remember it's between that uh, that you know what you both of you did that you batting at first drop and then just suddenly you had to go and survive the couple of overs the, the night before and then how you blossomed the next day you started playing like a real champion you back yourself great story not many people know people have asked me what what goes on inside the dressing dressing room which people don't know and people don't realize coach the the, the amount of pressure that as a coach or a manager that you go through and especially playing for a country like India or Sri Lanka where the spectator expectations are so high perhaps the players don't realize you know that the kind of pressure the management goes uh, goes through sometimes during games and the, when the players put their hands hand up and just go out and perform i think that's the greatest satisfaction a coach can have uh, coach what do you what do you what do you think yeah you, you probably said a hell of a lot of it um I mean that was a great great day and uh, and then I as a as a coach um because of Kashi's performances and having stood up for him I mean it just made satisfaction that much greater um yeah uh sure thinking about all that you've said there um it, it, it it's a difficult one because A, a, a coaching staff selectors really the job is to try and instill confidence in the players and 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 give them security and there was a guy that I knew was hitting the ball hell of a well um even though he got out early on um any any great player don bradnam got out early on it happened so i kind of was trying to argue that case was look the guys playing really well he's is gutsy as hell it's just what we need against sri lanka i mean against australia and 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 now you want to throw him away so i remember arguing that case a bit and um fortunately i got the, the response that i wanted from kashi and and so oh, i mean those that um finishing that game and everything uh, i know Jared, for you you've been involved in the game a lot of time uh, as a, as a player and as a manager and all sorts that kicked you in that kicked you out that kicked you back in that kicked you out <laughs> but you've done a lot of you know, you've done a lot of series but can there be a greater moment than that day at ssc when we won that game and then cast the show he had shown great character um uh, rangana had been smacked in the box and couldn't go out and bat again because he was in such agony but the, and then he pulled a muscle or something and he still i think he still took seven wickets uh, um so come on you know um if you're a sri lankan fan 
look at all of that. Incredible, incredible character that gets shown by our players. At times, I understand that um, um, the fans are emotional and they want the best, but gee, do me a favour. That was just incredible what happened in that Aussie series. It's true. You know, I think perhaps, you know, as you rightly said, that was, you know, maybe my greatest moment, you know, as a manager or even as a player or looking back, you know, that was, uh, I, I was the manager when we beat India. I think I'm not too sure whether it was a whitewash. It was a great moment, but compared to, you know, what we achieved that night at SSC, it was, you know, uncomparable. You know, that was brilliant. It's good stuff. Coach, you don't believe who's watching us right now. Uh, I don't know where he's, you know, that, you know, where he's writing to us. Steve Mount, you know, if you, good old Stevie. Oh, and, God. <laughs> no, no. How, how, I think cow no. attracts Stevie, like, you know, bad smell. Wherever cow goes, Stevie's around. And you don't believe. Exactly. Yeah. He, I don't know where he is, but he still follows me, I reckon. That's a problem, you know. Coach, you, can you remember every time when, you know, you know, he had a lot of... Uh, challenges all that you know i don't know whether you remember that call test where we you know after the test match was over we we had a uh, contest yes I remember, go on, go on. that's what he has written he has said the little man the couch i'll manage ask him about the day i smashed him all over goal <laughs> Didn't you? You got him out, though, didn't you? Yeah, I got him. He got it. I, he reviewed it. It was a full toss, and he missed a full toss, and he got a W, and he reviewed it, and then I don't know whether that yeah. there was an international Lampard who was there. I can't yeah. remember his name though. Oh, uh, was he? Uh, I think it was an Australian. I can't remember his name though. But he actually said it was plum in front. But then he reviewed it, and then there was a cameraman also, and then. The camera said like it was plumb in front, like all three were, you know, straight in. Impact, you know, it was in line and it was hit on his toe, straight on his toe. He missed the full toss, coach. How can he bat? I think it initially he admitted he was out. Then he tried to find evidence that he wasn't out. But he was, he was, exactly. I remember, yeah, I remember it well. And yeah, 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 yeah no, you cleaned him up, definitely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 but, you know, yeah. Still, Mounty still think, 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 uh, still says that you know, no, and no, that he smashed you all around the park, and you know, the uh, oh, after all these years, he has not given up following Kawa. That's the that's the best part. Even when you come on a live show, Mounty is there. <laughs> How ironic yeah. is that? <laughs> but I must tell you, he's a he's a great bloke. Uh, to be honest, you know the way. Obviously, we had a lot of fun uh, during the time that we played, and uh, obviously, he's one one guy who was, you know, with the with the boys, and you know, obviously helped him out, helped the boys yeah. out, and all all in all, you know, what he has done for the you know the uh, the team uh, mm -hmm. for six, nearly six years was really good, and um, and you know, I'm happy to you know always. Uh, uh, challenge him in different ways, obviously with conversations and and I I tend to I don't know whether oh, I got, oh, remember. Oh, oh, hold on, Steve says I was out in UAE, but I got my revenge in goal. Is that right? <laughs> you know, you talking about? <laughs> He's not letting you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think he he was trying to. Uh, I think he was he was he he got himself okay in goal. I reckon, if I'm not mistaken. But I got him clean W in UA. That was he. He he practiced a couple of times. I, I if I'm not mistaken, coach had to throw some balls at him uh, to do some practices. I would say, and he was practicing in different wickets just from you know. I wasn't telling him that which were bigger that I'm going to bowl at him. So he was he was practicing in a grass track. He was practicing in a you know dusty wicket. You know a wicket which you know and you know in golf test match he played in a you know the the, the match that we you know played played on so it was quite a flat track so you know he didn't he, didn't, he actually battled well to be honest that day, uh, that time we had a we had a great team we had a great management team you know that's you know that's something i think it was uh, perhaps the part of that success story coach you know that headed by you you know we had all we took very things you know as it came and you know we didn't have any issues inside the dressing room it was very peaceful it was very calm so i should say thank you very much to to all you guys contribution the players 
the, the management team, that we all worked as a team, and that was the beauty of it. And I hope that you know, it will continue in Sri Lanka cricket, although you and I are not there, and we play different roles. Coach, I must tell you a funny story about Kaua now that he's here, that, that uh, Kaua was brought down by SSC. I'm not taking the mickey out of SSC right now. You know, just SSC kind of going through a bit of a, to, to a hard, a rough patch. So Kaua, he disrupted this season in Aussie and they brought him down. And uh, unfortunately, you know, two days after Kau came, he was sent to quarantine. He was he was quarantined and he could get on the on the field. I hope Kau, you are ready with all your coaching experience back you know, down under that you know you're ready to go back and uh, do your thing for SSC and get them out of you know the, the tough spot they are in. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we we didn't have a really good season comparatively uh, to the last few years we had. We've been dominating uh, the last few years, I reckon, uh, you know, in club cricket. Uh, and uh, yes, we didn't have a good season. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, some of the youngsters, we got quite a few youngsters in our team who are upcoming and hopefully they will, uh, you know, start to perform uh, in the next few years' time. But yeah, uh, we we have to play the, uh, the what do you call this? Uh, uh, not the super eight, the the below one. So hopefully we have yeah. uh, we have to uh, win three games out of six. Uh, hopefully we can do that, and then uh, you know plan things for the next year and you know try to win the uh, championship next year. Good on you, Kawa. Kawa, I'm, I'm going to let you go because I have, you know, the, I have a few things to discuss with Coach, and yeah. it, it is always, you know, great, great having you on the show, Coach. And I'm, um, I just want to give you a surprise. And you know, Kawa, when I when I called Kawa, you know, he was on my, you know, he responded immediately. He said, I would love to come and say hi to Coach, and uh, so he volunteered himself to be there. And thank you very much. And you know, just to see you two blokes, you know. Uh, back on my show once again by the way coach you remember what you scored cow you know that that you know you were telling me off air that you know, i think i heard about it you know you used to give nicknames to all the players yeah, he is a chihuahua, because, you know, <laughs> chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair to be yeah. fair that came, that came from um uh, steve more than me yeah but exactly he was yeah. always yapping yapping away and and, and, and causing trouble just oh, not trouble, but just yapping away and and same when he was out on the field there, you know, he was just giving the opposition a little bit of a little bit of chat here and there all the time. So that's how he got his name. Uh, <laughs> and I suppose because he's fairly short. Um, I wouldn't say very short. Yeah. But very short. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? You remember the nickname that you gave me? That you gave the whole team nicknames. You know what he used to call you? Remember what he used to call me? Mm. Uh damage. No? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you used to call damage, damage, right? Yeah. Damage. Yes, you, know, that you changed my name, you know, and, uh, like it became oh, like damage. everybody started. Yeah. Damage. Yeah. Yeah. Damage, you know, yeah. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Is truthful. You were a bit of a damager. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. So, so you yeah. mean I did more damage damage to the team than any good? You know, is that what you are trying to imply? You know, just is that what you say? <laughs> I, I, I would say that we were actually a perfect partnership, and um, it it was disappointing in many ways yeah. at times because that partnership got broken up for reasons that yeah. yeah reasons I didn't understand, but um, you know I I, I think. We had a hell of an understanding between the two of us, and we worked so well together. And it was disappointing at times when it got broken up, and then suddenly it would come back, and and we we do some good things, you know. I mean, you, I'm, I mean that Aussie series and whatever, you know, great moments. So yeah. Um, how you were not part of, you know, that what coach is implying, you know, straight after that three great, uh, the, the the test, the series that we had, and it wasn't a great, the follow-up, uh, the ODI series, uh, you were not part of the squad that, you know, the uh, coach and myself, we went through some anxious moments, 
and as a result the team did not 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 coach and i and nothing personal but we had you know several uh, issues with the management you know uh, when it came to team selections and the team combinations and uh, uh, lots of things that happened in you know, it people want to know as a result that we lost the series for one coach if I may recall and you know, it was a bad series uh, the Aussies were nowhere and we were very confident of beating them but the, the the reverse happened you know that's not what people expected and it was a little disappointing you know that was like when you're looking back there's nothing to be proud of that series that uh, it was a hard time coach that the the the, the one day series and the 2020s as well yeah well I mean disappointing time because I think we had great momentum going in with a lot of those younger players you yep. know really really making things happen and then suddenly we went into this series and there were a few dramatic changes um, and I can't say that I wasn't part of it uh, I'm, not, I'm not blaming anybody I'm just saying that the, the one thing I, I, I do so we all we lost the first ODI and we won the second. So we were in pretty good fights, I think, at that stage. And then um, all these changes started to happen. Um, but, you know, I was always in there, so I can't, I can't say it, you know. But, uh, but it, it was tough times. Um, and, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, times you know, people want to really want to recall. Yeah. If if I can say one thing about, I had the most amazing times with Sri Lankan cricket and fantastic times. The one thing that was always an issue and always on my mind was the emotional control. Because if you lost one game, then you know all hell could break loose and all sorts of changes would happen and i think that is the one thing about there's so much talent there's so much exciting people really good people involved um but you just can't allow the emotional control to overrule all of that and it has happened a little bit in the past, or certainly in my time, the time we, we, we got a bit carried away. We had a great bunch of young guys. And, and I'd also like to say that I think um, going forwards, uh, Sri Lankan cricket is going to be very, very good because with all those guys, um, Prince Mendes, um, uh, um, Iceman, and all those guys who are now hitting the peak. So I think I think it's gonna go pretty well. I really do. I really believe it's exciting times ahead. But the emotional control right from the top to the bottom. So uh, and I probably spoke to you a bit in the dressing room and at times sometimes we lost the game and even you would get a bit excited or um, uh, yeah, <laughs> the excitement would come from the top. You lost the game. It happens in cricket. But our emotional control has always been an issue. If we get that a little bit better, and Mickey, I'm sure, will do that. And you've got a fantastic guy there. So if we can just get that emotional control a bit better, I reckon this ranking cricket's going to be good. Great words of wisdom, coach. And I hope you know the uh, the authorities are watching. You know, it's always the emotional. It comes to the emotional con the content that we spoke about earlier. That you know, as I said, the expectations are so high in this part of the world when it comes to the subcontinent. I I hope that you know, agree with me. The uh, perhaps the players don't feel the the outside pressures you know we always try we try very hard not to let that you know pressure get on to the get on to the players and you know to go out there and do their thing but uh, there's uh, as you very rightly said if we can distance distance ourselves you know from that emotional aspect and you know more con concentrate more on the job in hand i think that's the way to go and great words coach and as you said that you know you have a lot of faith in mickey arthur i haven't had a chat with mickey or i have not met him well, i don't think you have met have you worked with mickey earlier Oh, I know Mickey 
from way back. So we, we, we're good friends, actually. Um, so we go back way back uh, from South African cricket. So, yeah, we come from the same part of the world in South Africa. Um, we pretty often in touch. Um, so, yeah, no, no, no issue there. You're right. Uh, oh, have you worked with Mickey earlier? Well, have you met with Mickey? Thing, um, uh, Charis, I just want to ask you. Oh, yeah. um, Go on, Coach. Sorry. Yeah, when we talk about emotional control and all of that, yes. Um, how did you rate yourself as <laughs> being con well controlled when, uh, and particularly when I think about the incident in in at Lords? Um, <laughs> are you are you on top of your, or were you on top as a manager of your emotional control? Well. <laughs> Coach, to tell you frankly, you know that what transpired. You know, not many people know what happened. Uh, Kau, I think you are, you are, you are, you are in the middle or you are in the dressing room. Couple of yeah, positions, yeah. you know, perhaps uh, yeah. the coach will explain it better. And you guys were on the field. I think Kasha uh, was really batting. He 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 made ru big runs that day. So that's kind of yeah, he had a big impact on that game. But um, he probably didn't know what you were up to off the field. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know about it. Yeah, all of a sudden I saw this. Okay, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah, you know that was after that only. You know, we decided to hoist our flag on the on the uh, the Lord's balcony, and that too became an issue. Again, I was called up for another inquiry. You know, why I hosted the uh, hosted the flag, and it wasn't funny. So I had to go up with a uh, with a with a proper excuse, and I was I was released. You know, I was pardoned with a warning. That's not what happened, Kao. You know, that when we went to question certain decisions, some of the 50-50 decisions were going against us and the coach was getting very jittery. And uh, coach said, go have a chat with, go have a chat with the match referee. Uh, and uh, so I went and I went along with coach and the match referee had a massive go at coach. He literally threw us out of the, out of the match referee's room. He's, you know, banged the door on uh, Fordy's face. And I was shocked, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't restrain myself. I said, hell with cricket. This guy has, you know, told us off, you know, we are inside a test match, inside, uh, inside Lords, and I was all out to go have a, you know, go, I don't want to mention the match referee's name because he's still a match referee. I believe that, you know, at some point in our life, you know, we will uh, cross his path and, you know, just we'll have a good laugh about it and have a be over it. We have spoken about it. I think, you know, he eventually, after the series, came and apologized to coach. But it wasn't funny. Cow, it was really, and coach was shattered. And the best part was, I managed to quickly restrain myself after the game was over. Coach was not letting it go. He he insisted to sit outside match referee's room until he came out and he challenged him. You know, you guys don't know what really happened. You know, that was wasn't funny at all. But you know, eventually, the you know, I think you know, we we came to some sort of an understanding. The the he apologized, and you know, we dropped the we dropped the the, the the whole issue then and there we carried on but it wasn't funny coach that was one of the occasions i have seen you losing yourself tell, tell, tell us more about it what happened well mostly i used to load up the bullets and let you fire them <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. um yeah strange uh, i don't sure i'm not as you say, I, I, I'm not that kind of person. I think you've got to keep emotional control, and you want to, it's particularly when you're coaching Sri Lanka, you want to show that your emotional control is pretty good. Um, so I used to sometimes boil like hell inside, but just try and um, uh, show that I kind of had it under control. But I guess maybe they. They doubted me. I don't know. Um, yeah, that day, uh, the, the, the hurtful thing was that the match referee kind of kicked me out of the the room, and that yeah. and that fired you up, which was oh, so you didn't need to bring up. So, yeah, it kind of got you going like hell. Um, so yeah, that was that was a difficult thing. I, I, if I remember the the whole incident um Yon Pradeep was bowling um there was a message for or the, the matter three and the third umpire had 
had noticed that Nguyen was bowling some no balls. And then they sent out a message to the to the umpire, I forget his name, but um, and he then called a no ball, which wasn't a no ball, and it was a wicket. And it was quite a crucial stage of the test. And that's when you took off. I kind of accepted it, but you lost your, yeah, you, <laughs> you lost your tools. <laughs> and then all of a sudden there was big drama and next thing you were waving Sri Lankan flags. But um, in those days, I think that was, the rule was that um, if you bowled a, a no ball that was seen by the third umpire, it didn't, it, it was, it was, the on-field call, and then yep. it, it led to the change of rules. Now it's all changed. Now you know, obviously you've got the third umpire and the match referee watching <coughs> and keeping a call on every single line call. So probably that day led to the change of rule, which is a great thing for cricket. Brilliant. You know, I mean, I didn't realize that the change of rules, Kao, actually, like what happened on field, that uh, the rules changed. Now, actually, uh, now you can refer to your third, uh, the, the no ball, then, you know, you can reverse the decision. But at that time, we, did have, we didn't have it until that incident took place at Lords and something good came out of it, you know, it's, uh, of all that, you know, that, that was brilliant. And it was, uh, you guys, you boys didn't, didn't know what was happening, but it was pretty tense situation, was handled quietly and... And luckily that, you know, the press did not get to know about it, what transpired behind the scene, you know, off the field and, you know, it was all settled, but it was, it, it was a tense situation. And uh, Coach Wiles, Kau is here. And just quickly, you know, the time's running out. And there's, uh, just to ask you that yesterday, I just watched, I think the football started. I know that, you know, you're a big uh, football fan. You know, the, the European football season started the Bundesliga. And what was happening there is crazy. You know, the team traveling in two buses and keeping, you know, distancing themselves. And Kawa, if you, you know, you should watch it, you know, on highlights, um, how the players, even the reserves, they could not sit together. They were all, you know, seated wide apart and distancing themselves from one another. Even after scoring a goal, they were not allowed to do their normal, usual, traditional celebrations, you know, all muted celebrations and you know after the game you'd have seen uh, i think borussia dortmund players just waving to the empty stands there wasn't a single spectator and that's how the game was played i don't know where cricket is going to go i simply have no idea you know once this covid thing is over and once we get back on field the how the game is going to transform coach what do you think how the game is going to go from where we are right now once we get back on field yeah, um, sadly, I think it's going to get to a point where, well, I, I think the, the ECB are, are very positive about getting the game going and, 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 the, and the English government want them to get it going. But I think it's going to be um, charted flights from teams. So let's say West Indies, I think they've got a test series against the West Indies chartered flights into the country, um, probably having done 14 days or so of isolation prior to that, then going into possibly um, the Hampshire ground, which is, has, has a hotel right there. Uh, everybody staying in the hotel, or all that are involved in the game staying in the hotel, and then them playing a match and uh, after probably still because you still need 15 days of of um isolation i think so uh, it so it's it, it's it's gonna happen but it's gonna be it's gonna be under all these restrictions of isolation and uh, people staying in hotel halls and yeah and and behind closed doors but you know all that isolation involves your TV crews and your umpires and your caterers and everything that's going to go with it. So it's it's not easy, but it, I think it's going to go ahead. Yeah. Right, Kawa. What do you think as a player's point of view? You know how you how are you looking forward to you know this getting back on the field. You know what 
what would you just tell us you know like you know how you picture the whole uh, post covid scenario well i think uh, well you know it's been two months now without no sport at all in all over the world and i think uh, especially the the english players obviously they have only six months of cricket so which is like the summer so it must be really tough for those guys uh, you know without missing and i you know i've been spoken to some of the english players and uh, they are very frustrated and you know what has gone to uh, at this stage but end of the day you know uh, you can't uh, control these things you know this has happened to all over the world so uh, yes it will take a bit of time but you know uh, you need to start things up you know you can't stop for days and you know a, you know years and stuff like that not doing anything because we have to come out of it so that is very important so how we come out of it is what is very crucial and probably as coach said uh, obviously the international level uh, they might have like guidelines where the players will be restricted where they they will be isolated and obviously there won't be much crowd at the start but you know the game needs to start i reckon and hopefully if we can control those uh, elements and then start things up uh, then gradually you know it will you know improve and obviously it is end of the day it is a virus you know there's no cure for a virus unless you get an you know uh, unless you get a vaccination or a, you know anything else so you need to make sure like you know people need to encourage themselves to you know get their immune system better get their diets better get their you know nourish nutrition or whatever things that their immune system can be better sure. so that is something that you know uh, the people need to work on better uh, you know from now itself and start you know uh, probably you know go back to old days you know eating organic food uh, something like that will you know definitely help people to get their immune system uh, so i think you know we just can't uh, run run away from this we just have to you know fight with it and you know plan something out and make sure that you know we we come out of it that is the most important thing well said cop well said coach guess who else is watching you know say a big hello to you bawa is online say 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, bawa is watching the show the entire management team is on there he is watching yeah. Bawa, Bawa doing great. You know, you know that Bawa is with the with the uh, Indian team. You know, it's just going great. Guns. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he has become Virat Kohli's left hand man. Yeah, Rocky sir, Rocky sir. He's uh, he's great. Yeah. So, Coach, great. can you remember? Can you remember the spell he bowled uh, before the second innings of the England Test in Durham? Can you remember that uh, the 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 wicket which was a bit uh, damp? And obviously you and Bauer was throwing balls at me, and, and it was minus, was minus three degrees. Was it? Exactly. And it was freezing. Was like, yeah, and he was like, you know, with two new balls, you two were like throwing really hard, and I think that was that like you know, and we batted and we got three hundred odd runs in that second innings, and you know, we were all out for sixty odd. Or seventy odd in the first innings, if I'm not mistaken, and they 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 got two hundred, and they we managed to get three hundred and fifty or something, and we batted like Angie got a uh, no Chandi got a hundred, and then Angie got another eighty, myself uh, sixty or something, and then you know, but like for me, I thought that spell was really really tough, and uh, and that helped me to um, you know get my uh, you know. Uh, blood circulation going, and obviously you know, that helped me to, um, you know, get my you know uh, technique part smoother. Obviously, uh, you know, um, I think that was really, really one aspect that I really liked about you because you always challenged the players, and yeah, that makes I, it. Uh, I, I, I hear everything you're saying, but I guess it is a little bit about. Um, what works best for each individual. So, um, in, in, in at that stage, yes, um, there were certain guys that got really tested, and 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 that's where Bauer was fantastic. He just he would test 
anybody out. And, they, and, and, and probably for me as a coach, I was just looking at who's tough enough to handle this guy because he was like Mitchell Johnson, wasn't he? He, 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 he put you under pressure. Um, but there are probably other guys that maybe felt better prepared with slightly easier throwdowns and whatever. So um, individual needs are important. But I um, yeah, if I could have Bauer with me right now, I'd just grab it. He was just amazing. And, um, Brilliant coach. Just to stop you there, people are asking who Bauer is. So the people, you know, that they don't know much about Bauer, can uh, coach, can you please tell who Bauer is? You know, they keep on asking many questions, you know, Raj Rajita uh, and lots of guys, you know, who, people would love to hear from you if you can tell them who Bauer is and what Bauer did for the team. Well, you you can probably tell me, tell the story better than me, but um, yeah, I was this guy that was a so-called fielding coach. I think he... Yeah. yeah, he was as strong as hell. Um, the strongest man I've ever met uh, because he, he's stronger than you, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> no comparison, coach. He's a superman. Ah. You try to compete with him, but I'm um, just a um, maniac. Um, who knows? What, <laughs> but when it came down to workloads and helping out your players and spending time with players, he was amazing and so to have him on your coaching staff just exceptional and 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 that's why india india snapped him up and he, he's been a great success there but and i think at times because he's such a strong bloke and he could he could whiz a bloody sidearm down at exceptional pace certainly yep. criticized him but very Kohli in India had a look at them and said, gee, that's what we need. It's particularly as a left arm and you're going to go and play Mitchell Johnson or, or Stark or whatever. <coughs> that's the quality we need. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy for him. And he's, he's done a hell of a well and he, he will have learned with every, you know, contact that he has with these great players. He will have just learned more and more and more. So, yeah, good for him. Yep, you know, coach, you know, if people want to know more about Bauer, you know, Kau, you know, perhaps, you know, you, you, you remember this. Uh, when we, I think after after the first test, I think, you know, we were back in London, I can't remember where, and uh, at the net, net session, that we were looking for someone to bowl extra quick at you guys. And the coach just uh, asked Bauer, Bauer was throwing with, without a sidearm. He was just, he was just, you know, throwing down. He was just doing the throwdowns. And coach gave him, a sidearm and said, Bawa, can you try with this? And we got you off the net because we weren't sure, very sure where Bawa is going to throw down. And he sent the first two balls. And you know, we turn around and ask coach, what am I going to do? Coach, I remember saying, do not, do not ever change. Throw as fast as you can. And you know, he became an absolute nightmare to you players, especially on green tops. And Bawa never looked back. And I know he, I think you know, since that day. He started pushing more weight onto his left arm, you know, which if he was pumping 100 case, I think it came 200, you know, that's the, the speed got better, better and better. And there was no stopping thereafter. And remember coach, if you, you know, going back to Zimbabwe, that uh, one day Bauer, Bauer was going as everybody got everybody jumping in, in the net. What Dicka did, the first ball, do you recall? It was one of those moments I never forget. We tried to tell him, do the old little scoop, didn't he? Come <laughs> yeah. on, you don't believe. And you know, Bauer was blazing away. And the first ball in the net, Dinka goes and he plays the scoop. You know, that the yeah. coach was like, What the hell? What's this guy up to me? Like, coach, that's him, that's him. You know, take it easy. You know, that was, uh... by the way, coach, you know, before we wrap up, and uh, I don't know whether he's listening or not, but. Gee, what a great guy to have in your support staff, and uh, I was so privileged to have a guy like that work with me and and make my job easier. We're still in touch. Um, he's going well, and 
he deserves every bit of success he's getting. And I don't want to, I never want to knock Sri Lankan cricket because I love them. But they let a good guy go there. That's all I can say. Coach, you know, before we wrap up, you know, you remember that famous bus ride we had in Zimbabwe? <laughs> when I broke up. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, often I often, I see that I've got the photograph somewhere where we're sitting under a tree there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, Coach, you got the dirtiest mouth, you know, at the, all, out of all the blokes that I've met. I remember you getting into the bus. You told me, this damn bus is going to break. And it broke. <laughs> I did tell you right at the start, but not because of a dirty mouth. I just said, as we got <laughs> I said, I, 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 this bus is not going to get us there. <laughs> and and even as we were going out of Harare, it stuttered and, it, you know, I just knew it was never going to get us there. <laughs> you were not on that tour. It was unbelievable tour that, you know, we didn't have a, no, no, none, of the, none of the seniors were, were available for the tour. So we literally, we made, we made the tour with a, like a makeshift team. But we played great cricket. But unforgettable incident, you know, during the tour that was breaking down middle of nowhere, and there was no signal for me to call, you know, the Zimbabwean cricket board or to SLC. Uh, we were lost, mate. You know that you know we were put into small small vans and taken into the nearest suburb, and the boys were hungry. We we were stuck on the road for hours, you know, middle of a international tour it was you know Cody and I we were holding our heads and like you know what the hell mate what's going on and we managed to get to was it Bulawayo yeah we were going from Harare to Bulawayo I think and we we got in there there was a banquet going on we managed to get there just like five minutes before the banquet started and it was good it was a good tour coach well I think perhaps one of the best tours that we ever had well we um we won the two tests oh. and then we very convincingly, I think both by an innings and plenty. Yeah. And then <coughs> the ODI series was a triangular with the West Indies. That's right. Yes. And we somehow won a we won a very tight game against the West Indies with a catch on the fence at the off the last ball or something. Um, who's the, the big tall uh, left arm spinner? Um, he came in and, and he had a slog and got out. I don't know. But we, yeah, we managed to win the one day series, the triangular as well. So it was a pretty good joy. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff, coach. Coach, you know, before I let you go, just tell us briefly about your future plans and uh, what your intentions are. Do you, have, do you ever think of coming back to Sri Lanka if given an opportunity? I know you had a, you had a bad experience, you know, during your last stint and, I do not want to talk about it, uh, how you left the country, which we are really sorry about it. You know, what are your future plans? You know, what advice you can give it to hundreds of people watching you right, right out there? Well, firstly, let me say that um, my times with Sri Lanka were, were great times. And um, so I have no regrets and no issues. And, and I think I've always said that. Um, life in cricket, you, yeah, you have your ups and downs. Um, so probably that second stint didn't um, end up the way I would have liked it to end up. But okay, but, but having said that, you know, some people sort of say, "Well, why did you? Why did you do it?" Or um, the one thing I'll always say is that. Um, and, and, and the Surrey people will always say, because I was going well with Surrey and, and enjoying Surrey, but the one thing they will, that I'll always say is that the experience of beating Australia in that Test Series 3-0 makes up for everything. So that was the most fantastic, probably the most fantastic moment in my coaching career. And, and then I had asked that, well, I think before that I had the um, experience of Sri Lanka beating South Africa 4-1 in a ODI or ODI series. So that was great. 
then the, the, the sort of um, um, beating South Africa in the T20 series and then going on to straight to Australia and, and, and beating Australia in the T20 series. Those were great moments. So just fantastic for me and, and huge memories. And, and, and Bomber uh, Guru, Nat, Guru Ratna was, was a special bloke in, in, in all of that, all of those achievements, but great moments. So I've, I've got fantastic memories of everything I did in, in Sri Lanka. And I, yeah, I still talk about possibly coming out there with my family to, if I can, to sort of find a way to, to live there because it's just such a great place. So yeah, I, I, I'm just, just so happy with, that I got the opportunity and the, and got to know so many fantastic people and a lot of those players were like my sons. So um, yeah, great moments and um, what else can I say? Great stuff. Were you talking about Bomber, uh, Coach? You know, uh, you, you mentioned about Bomber, right? You know, the, that that's yeah. How any idea what his Arsenal is up to these days? Is he injury free or is he back or what? What, what is he up to? Well, he played with uh, that. Well, I, yeah, I think he's back uh, after the injuries and uh, he's back in uh, back into form, I reckon. And he played some games for Army uh, Sports Club. Yeah, he so, did. Yeah, uh, he played against yeah, us. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I think he played some. Uh, he played one of the warm-up games as well. I reckon, if I'm not mistaken, against the England uh, national team. Uh, right. So what is he's he's probably now what thirty six or 30, 37, maybe. So he's quite uh, old. I think. Yeah, he's about thirty five. I think thirty five. Uh, thirty five. When I think when he played, but I mean, what a what a it was quite. The, the impact he had at that time was amazing. I mean, he just played fantastically. And then he kind of got left out. But he was, gee, that game in Australia, when he won, he, he got 80, 85 or 40 balls or something. God, God was, was, you know, he was in the form of life. He was, he was on fire. But unfortunately, um, he got he broke his thumb, didn't he? He broke his thumb fielding on the slips. In a test match against yeah. India, I think. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of all went wrong from there, didn't it? He because he, mm. he, he hasn't played much since then. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I mean he was out out of the game for a long time, one injury after the other. The poor bloke, I, I wish him well. Hopefully he'll be back, you know, before the time runs out on him. Uh, coach, you forgot to mention 2012-2020 World Cup. You know, we had some great times and uh, we got into the final. I think that was, to me, one of the hardest moments, I think, when we lost the West Indies in the final, you know, back you know, at home in front of all our, uh, all our fans, everybody watching, and it was very heartbreaking. I still remember my family, you know, waiting for me uh, at the hotel and the fans just disappeared. People had so much expectation for us to win. We went as the the favorites at you know but west indies beat us uh it was a great tournament you know we had some great moments coach yeah i mean one of the most hurtful days of my coaching career because well it's fantastic that we we did everything that we did i mean to get there was and we lost i think we lost the first game to south africa hopelessly and we got better and we, 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 you know, we won some pretty exciting games. And then we had, we had the West Indies in, in big trouble. And then uh, Marlon Samuels, was it, that came out and Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. It's one of the, I still, I still think it was a great achievement that we got to the finals. At the same time, it's really hurtful that we um, kind of lost the game that I, I felt we should have won because we had them in trouble. We had them in big trouble, and then and then there was this just miraculous innings from um, Samuels that just took the game away from us. Yeah, 
Yep, it's a great moment. And if you recall that, you know, one of the high high points during that uh, uh, the tournament that you know how we that you and I we managed to swap the captains and we deceived ICC. And uh, <laughs> you remember that incident, coach? Yeah, that, that that's all you're doing. <laughs> don't don't uh, <laughs> for that. But yeah, it made sense at the time, and um, yeah, the ICC didn't like it. Um, but you, you've always found a way to upset people. <laughs> I'm that. <laughs> you know, my, that, comes, that comes naturally, coach. That yeah. comes naturally. Yeah. You found a way <laughs> to love it. I think that's kind of that's why I so, so much enjoyed working with you was that we had a, a relationship that was. Um, it was a partnership. It wasn't uh, anything more than that. It was, it was an absolute partnership, and you knew where you need to step in and help me out, and I knew where I had to step in and help you out. Um, so we had a fantastic time, and unfortunately, because of the emotional, as I, I mentioned more and more, the emotional or lack of emotional control, there were times when you had to go on garden leave or <laughs> whatever they call it but you you kind of got kicked out and then you come back and then you you know but if they just let us get on and work together i think there would have been a lot more success and same for the players yeah thanks for the kind words coach you know that uh time's running out on us it is great having you and more than anything else you know it's great seeing you after all these years since you left Sri Lanka, yes, we have kept in touch, but I have not seen you. But as I said, you know, you look sharp, you look well. And uh, I hope whatever the injuries that, you know, we did not discuss, that you get over injuries and uh, you'll be 100% fit. You get back to your normal running regime and you you run your seven kilometers uh, for a day and keep your focus. And Kawa, big thank you to, big thank you to, to uh, for you joining, coming on the show and, you know, with a, with just you know one call you accepted my invitation and being there and good to have you back how all the very best you know this with the, the thank you very much the tournament it was nice to, have me, nice to have me on the show and coach it was always great to work with you and always you know get to get the knowledge and experience and you know that guidance from you it was really appreciated and i will still keep you know sending you messages and you know ask for that knowledge and next you know whatever that, uh, you know, you can give me. Uh, thank you very much for all that. And thank you, Chitaritaya, for, you know, having me on this show. And all the very best to both of you. And we will keep in touch and stay safe. Kao, a pleasure, mate. And an honor to have you on the show. Uh, it's great having you. Coach, any parting words to Kao? Sure. I think we're running out of time, aren't we? Uh, oh, yeah. Just to go. <laughs> oh, and gee, um, <laughs> you know, I always loved having him in the in the group, and he was always full of energy, and that's that's what cricket's about. But um, yeah, just hoping he's going well, and his family's going well, and um, lovely to see. I think we had a, a bit of a connection, just more on the about the the fight like crazy and the work ethic and that kind of thing. Which is so important to success in cricket. So, um, loved working with him. Um, at times, people doubted him because of his maybe lack of uh, freedom as a player, but gee, his, his fighting ability, and I think that's what he takes into life. So, Kashi, gee, you've got so much going for you, buddy. Thanks a lot, coach. Thank you. He's a fighter. He's nothing but a fighter. Kao, once again, all the very best. In a big, big hello to your lovely wife. Say hello to her. Hopefully, that they um, will catch up very soon, either on all field right. or off field. And uh, all the very best. And uh, and and some are saying, Coach, time for your Jemison. <laughs> uh, and our, you know, my inbox is full. People sending me photographs of uh, very Akaushi. Uh, I will forward these pictures to you. Some great pictures of you, mate, and uh, in my yep. inbox uh, sent by Tusit Vijay Doru. Thanks, Tusit. I will forward these to Kawa after the show. He would love to see them. Some great moments, you know, of your career. And uh, thank you very much once again. Good night, Kao, and stay safe and stay All well. Right, good night. See you.
And just a few more words before with Coach, you know, before I let him go, because I'm not very sure when will I see him again. Just uh, one or two words. Thanks, Carl, once again. There he goes, Coach. You know, that was not a surprise. You know, he probably, you know, the cow volunteered to say hi to you. And um, just take a moment to say thank you to everyone who watched the show and, you know, uh, sent in messages and being a part of the entire thing. And I think they, they, they still love you, Coach, back in Sri Lanka. And lots of, you know, they, they thank you for the advice and keeping focus all that and they say that we'd love to see you back in the Sri Lanka team someday if you can we'd love to have you back and uh, many many messages that everybody praising you and say how much they miss you and I think that's the true sentiment of Sri Lanka that you've been a more than more than a coach I think your contribution and what people don't realize you know, I, you know when you are talking about Mickey Arthur and what the transition period that Sri Lanka has gone through that your audio wasn't that great I think what you said was, correct me if I'm wrong, coach, you did all the hard work with the younger lot that is coming up and they are, they are, you, you believe that personally, you believe that, you know, they have reached their peak and that the Sri Lanka cricket is in for, for good times and, you know, it's about time for them to perform. That's what you said, right? Yeah. I mean, from, from my side, um, and I've said it quite a few times is that, um, Sri Lankan cricket is is a huge part of my life, and even though I'm not I'm not there, I, I just want them to do well, and I, I have so many of the players that I I still stay in, stay in touch with, and um, they're very good at contacting me as well, and I just want to see them really, I, and I believe they will they will do some special things. So uh, Mickey's in the in a good place because we've got a lot of great lads that are are really um, progressing in their game and they've, they've grown in their game and they've understood their game and uh, and they've had experience, I mean, experience is what it's all about and they've got they've had this experience so I think Sri Lankan cricket's in a good place and Mickey's lucky enough to be there at the right time to see the, the game really kick on. From from my side, um, gee, um, I had great moments there. Um, met fantastic people. Um, it's a, it's a place that I often talk to my wife about. It's a place that I would, I would like to one day set up. Oh. So yeah, Sri Lanka is all special, and I watch it closely and I read the news. Um, uh, and I had so many wonderful, I met so many wonderful people that were such good friends. So, yeah, that's, that's really neat. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much, Coach, for your time once again, for being on my show. I wish you also nothing but the very best in your future endeavors. You know, hopefully that the Irish cricket will, will progress. I know it's, it's not, not the easiest place to be in. Not not only because of the weather, you know, because of the cricketing culture, it's a more uh, football, mm -hmm. rugby nation, and uh, cricket is not that great. But you know, they got some great players. So you got you got. I believe that you got your work cut out. You know what you need to do with Ireland to take take them to the next level. And uh, all I can say is, thank you very much for all what you have done for Sri Lanka. And personally, thanks for your your time, your company, your guidance during your time with me. And, and I had some advice. We shared some very special moments with you and my uh, sincere gratitude for, for, for making me what I am today. And you'll be always be in touch. And I'm also, whenever you farm in a spot, I'll be seeking your advice in the future. You know, you're a great man, great coach, great human, more than anything else. Coach, pleasure and thank you. Thank you. And I'll let you go, go and enjoy your Guinness or the Jameson. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, coach. Bye-bye.